Check out this property. Have you ever seen, have you ever seen a free house? Well, you're looking at one now. Is it free? Yeah, kind of. So I get, this guy was uh, one of my many leads that I go out on appointments with. And uh, I called him ahead of time to book the appointment. And the guy says to me, hey, would you be interested in taking over my house subject to? And I've been in this business since 1989. That is the first time that a seller suggested to me that I take over his mortgage payments. No one says that, okay? If you went around and, and I, let's just assume that I've spoken to hundreds of people about subject to. None of them know what I'm talking about until I explain it to them. They need to be told about it because sellers just don't normally know that kind of thing. Professional real estate investors would know it, but not necessarily a seller. This guy offered me to take over his loan payments on the telephone before I ever went there. And when I got there, his house is in East Norriton. The address is uh, 2930 North Wales Road in East Norriton. If anybody knows that area. It's a really well-built house. If you look on the side of the house here, it's got like huge concrete structure with brick construction all the way up. It is a, it's a bi-level. The house is in really good condition. Like, I mean, I got to rip out some carpets, but they got hardwood floors underneath all the carpets. I'm just going to rip it out, chuck it in a dumpster and be done with it. It's got uh, four bedrooms, one and a half baths. The baths are a little outdated, but so what? So the guy's story, when I went to see him, um, I did a quick tour of the house, which is the way I usually start most appointments. I like to walk around the outside, walk around the inside, get a quick feel for what I'm looking at. But I'm also calculating in my head, how much money is it going to cost to fix this place? Now, they were, they were moving. They were getting prepared to move. So the house was sort of in chaos. But I could, uh, I could tell pretty easily, this house don't need a lot of money. Like a couple grand, maybe? A couple grand, right? So we go out back. We sit down. We start talking. They got a porch out back. We start talking about the deal, what's going on. And this guy and his wife kind of have a history of uh, not paying their bills, okay? So they'll get like a loan and they'll pay it for a while while times are good. And then this particular year, he didn't hide the fact that he had done this before. He said, you know, COVID hit. I did the six month deferment on my payments and uh, he's having trouble with his boss up here. He's a little, a little bit frustrated with this place called Philadelphia. And he's in East Norriton, so he's pretty close to Norristown. So he was kind of bashing Philly, bashing Norristown. And he said, you know, I just decided I don't want to be around here anymore. <clears throat> so he started calling. He's, a, he's like a tree guy. He goes around and he knocks on people's doors or goes to see booked clients. And he sells them tree work. Okay, so he's a salesman. He's a professional salesman. Those guys can make decent money, I think. So he found a job in Hilton Head, that South Carolina. Hilton Head's in South Carolina, right? I've been to Charleston. I've, I've been to South Carolina a number of times, but uh, I've never been to Hilton Head. Anyway, he says, so here's the deal, Phil. Um, here's my house. <clears throat> I owe $362,000. I'm sorry, $262,000 on this house. He says, um, I took the six month deferment of my payments on COVID. And now the bank says that if I make double payments for six months in a row, which would, it's like an $1,800 normal payment. So now it's going to be just under four grand. All right. So if I agree to make the payments on his property, that's what subject two is. If you don't know, 
the seller in a normal real estate transaction, the buyer comes in and he pays off the existing mortgage that's in place. So that the seller's mortgage is completely replaced with the new mortgage that the buyer is responsible for, right? However, what subject two, what you do in a subject two arrangement is you don't pay off the seller's mortgage. You don't bring a new mortgage to the table. You simply continue to make payments on his mortgage, okay? You're probably thinking right now, why the heck would somebody do that? Why would you sell me the asset? So now I own the house. Well, I don't own it yet. I will own it in about 48 hours, okay? So why would somebody do that? Well, I'll tell you why. This guy is heading to sheriff sale. He's made up his mind. He ain't going to make double payments for six months. And he doesn't care if the house goes to sheriff sale. He's going down to Hilton Head and he's going to start his new life. The reason he called me was because he had taken an $800 course somewhere 15 years ago where he remembered somebody teaching a strategy about subject two. And he, you know, basically remembered the, the gist of it, which was somebody else, the buyer comes in and makes the payments and the loan stays in place, right? So when I go to meet him, we start talking about it. I said, so tell me what's going on. He goes, you know, look, he goes, we're just fed up with this area. We're rolling. But we wanted you to know that we'll let you have this house for free if you just make the payments. So the payments are normally about 1850 bucks a month, but I'm going to have to pay almost 4000 for six months. But so what? How much money are we really talking about? The double payments, it's, it's 1800 times six. I mean, if you were to buy a house, would you have to put some money down? If you got a conventional loan from a bank, you sure would, right? So really, he's not asking for a whole heck of a lot. And I'm telling you, the place is in really good shape. It's like a moving ready right now. So I had all the paperwork constructed to take over the loan subject to, and I had my title company overnighted him a package tonight down to Hilton Head. I've spoken to him on the phone several times this week. He's definitely going to sign all the paperwork. He's walking away from his house anyway. So if he walks away from it, his credit's going to get severely damaged. If it's not already severely damaged, I don't know. I didn't look up his credit. I don't really care, right? But his idea was, hey, I'll give you the house if you just make the payments. Because he knows that if I make the payments, his credit won't get destroyed. I will have to clean up the almost $4,000 a month for six months. I will have to do that. But what, I'm not really eating $4,000 a month for six months. I'm eating half of that. I'm eating 1800 right? Not a big deal to get into a place like this. So what did I do today with this property? Because now I got an agreement with the guy verbally. I know the guy. I've met him multiple times. I feel very comfortable. He's definitely going to sign the paperwork. It was his freaking idea, right? I didn't even present it to him. He presented it to me. So I know the guy's going to do it. Right? He's got to run to a notary and get it notarized and then overnight it back to me. He's going to do it. I have no question in my mind that it's going to happen. So first thing I did today, after I spoke to him and got the title company to overnight the property paperwork, I put the house up for sale for $299,000. I mean, we're in a pretty crazy market right now. It's not a lot of inventory. Houses are flying off the market. People are bidding them up, up, up like way beyond what they should be. So what do I got to lose? Is the guy from Hilton Head going to call me up and say, who said you could list my house for sale? What the hell do I care? He doesn't care. He cares even less than me about this house, right? He walked away from it. Now, this is a rare situation. I've never had a guy present to me to take my house over subject to. That's very rare. And, and, and if you were the one convincing someone else to do it, it's a bit more complex and a bit more difficult to make that happen. But if you think it can happen, you are sadly, sadly mistaken. 
But you're talking to a guy who's done over a million dollars in subject to purchases. And when they happen like this, this is a wonderful deal. So right now, you can go look up the address. It's uh, 2930 North Wales Road, East Norton, PA. I don't remember the zip. If you look it up, I also put the property up for rent. Why not? What do real estate investors do? Okay, I, I tell people all the time that real estate is very much like playing Monopoly. And they think I'm kidding or they don't get it or, but it is. So just think about it. The day I called this guy, I was rolling the dice. I rolled the dice. I landed on 2930 North Wales Road in East Norton. I called the guy. He, he offered to take over the loan subject too. I'm like, wow, hey, we got something special here. I'm gonna get my butt up there immediately and that's exactly what I did. Luckily for me, I'm sitting at a table on the back porch and the seller says, um, <clears throat> question for you, Phil. How do you feel about the uh, political election coming up? And so they wanna get political with me. So I just decided to tell the truth and I said, you know, uh, I'm a Trump supporter. And, uh, and they said, thank God, because we didn't want to sell this house to some liberal. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm glad, you know, because I didn't know what side they were going to be on, of course, when they asked me that question. But what I told them, I told them the truth. I said, Trump's my president. And he's also my mentor, because the first book I ever read about real estate was in 1985, which is The Art of the Deal, which I think is a great book. If you don't like Trump, fine, I don't care. But uh, to me, that was an amazing book. And I, even when I wrote my book, Addicted to Real Estate, I modeled it after Trump's book. There are similarities if you actually read them both and knew the differences. So, the guy sends me a text last weekend and he says, I've decided to leave Saturday morning. And I'm like, well, you can't leave yet. I haven't had you sign the subject to paperwork yet, right? So I get in my car, his phone doesn't work anymore because his phone was for his job up in East Norton and his company shut his phone off. And he only gave me that phone number, it's the only one I had. So I drive up to the house and um, there's a door on the side of the house on this side, right? And I'm like, well, he knew I was coming he, he wants me to take over the house, but he didn't have a lockbox on the house and there wasn't a key anywhere. So I thought, okay, well, maybe he hid a key somewhere. I started walking around the outside of the house, like thinking, you know, this guy's a smart guy. He left me a key somewhere. I couldn't find a key anywhere, right? So um, the side door that faces this side street, it had like three, like mm, three inch by eight inch windows in it, like three diagonal windows. So I said, well, I can easily break one of these windows and get in there, right? So I grabbed a brick off of his landscaping, wrapped it in a towel, broke the window. If you're laughing, look, if you're a real estate investor, you're going to have to break into houses sometimes. You're just going to have to. The guy already left. What am I going to do? Drive down to Hilton Head and fly him home so he can give me the key? Forget it. I'm breaking into the house. It's going to be my house anyway. So I get the brick. I wrap it up in a towel. I break one of the windows. Get my arm inside. Of course, it's a bolt lock without a key. I, it's not one that has a key in it. It just has a knob. I turned it. Boom, I'm in the house. Super easy. That probably cost, the piece of glass will probably cost me about $11. So I think I'm okay, right? I walk around to the front of the house to put the brick back. I actually put the brick back. A freaking U-Haul truck pulls up. It's the movers. Movers got the key. Okay. Yeah. Nah, it's my house anyway. Well, who cares, right? So the movers get out. There's like six guys in this truck. And uh, I was just about to start going through the stuff in the house because it was a bunch of stuff in there. And yeah, maybe you find, you know, you find all kinds of cool things in houses. Guns, knives, poker chips, uh, you know, whatever your imagination has in set. You find some cool stuff in houses. I actually have lots of things in my house and people go, where'd you get that? I go, some house, you know, I don't even remember which one, but a lot of tools, people leave tools around, things like that. So you can always, when you buy a house, you usually get a few gifts from 
from the from the heavens, right? Different gifts. Uh, I found a a poker chip box, like a massive poker chip box. I I play. Or sh I should say I used to play poker. I I haven't been able to play poker since uh, this COVID thing. So the mover pulls up and. And I said, well, what here is trash? And he goes, oh, no, no. he had it all figured out because the owner and him had worked it all out. So he knew where everything was. So it was cool. The mover gave me the key. He had a spare key. He gave me the key so I don't have to go break in every time I go there now. Now I actually have a key. I'm going to make some copies. So what did I do with the key? I made copies and I put the house on lockbox because I'm now, I already have people going through it tonight. I've already had uh showings already over there it's an empty house it's on a combo lockbox who cares so like monopoly i rolled the dice i found this guy i made a deal with him now how can i profit from it well one really easy way is put it up for sale for two hundred ninety nine thousand. somebody comes around and says i'll give you a 290 <laughs> it only was 263 i mean you know i gotta pay the realtor I'm going to make some nice money there. I'm going to make some really easy, nice money there. I'm the, well, right. I listed it for sale, right? And then, so in, you list a house for sale and now other agents see the house on the MLS and then they contact me. They go through showing time and they can, they can basically, the way I set up a listing, you, if you're a realtor and you see my listing pop up, you can be in that house in 10 minutes if you want to. Because it's, it's an empty house. What are they going to do? Steal the poker chips? I already took them. Right? There's nothing that they can take. The movers moved everything out on Saturday. The guy even left a dumpster in the driveway for me to get rid of the, some other stuff that he had, like some old fencing and stuff that he piled up. So I actually hired one of the movers to come back uh, this weekend and empty out the last of the stuff. The only reason I haven't allowed him to do it yet is because I'm waiting for the subject to paperwork to be overnighted back to me, which I will get on Saturday maybe or Friday, but I'll be in Florida anyway. So, but at least I know when the paperwork's back, my title clerk will email me a copy of it. I'll know the deal's locked up. I'm positive it's locked up anyway, but and I'm going to call one of the movers to just go back and get the rest of the last bit of stuff that's in the house. Like some of the, some of this fencing material that's underneath the deck out back. I'm going to have them rip up the carpets, right? I'm going to send in a hardwood floor guy to polish them up and I'm done. Right. And, and now this is a, this is roughly, let's just call it a, a $300,000 asset that was handed to me. All I have to do is find somebody to rent it and it's in great shape. It's in a nice area. I don't even, truth is, I don't know much about East Norriton. I remember looking at a deal there maybe 10 years ago. Uh, without a GPS, I wouldn't even know where the hell the town was. I really wouldn't. It just goes to show you if you're, if you're putting out marketing and you're screaming to the world that you buy houses, opportunities come around. Do they all come around like this? No, but this is one that I'm closing this week. One thing you'll learn about me is I'm talking about deals all the time that I'm doing right now. I'm not talking, sometimes I'll talk about like a deal if it was a really phenomenal or interesting deal and it has a lot of good lessons to it. But most of the time when you hear me talk, I'm talking about something I bought like last week, right? Because I do this for real. And when you learn how to do this, and we're going to, if you become a member of this school, I promise you, you will be able to do these kind of deals because this is the kind of stuff that I teach and that I talk about. Larry does it. I do it. Fred does it. Jamie's learning how to do it. And all of you guys are going to learn how to do it. And these skills are something that nobody can ever take away from you. All right. Uh, ask me if you want, what do you think I'm going to be doing the rest of my life? I mean, Stock options is really fun and I like it a lot, especially when we have a good day. Boy, that feels great, right? But real estate, I'm never going to stop doing it. I can't. I can't stop doing it, right? It's just this kind of stuff. Somebody gives you a $300,000 asset. Now, does it have $300,000 in equity in it? Absolutely not, okay? 
The highest comp I could find for this house was 281,000. It's the highest comp that I could find that matched this exact design of the house. So what, who cares? I'm gonna stick a tenant in there and forget I even own this house. That's what I'm gonna do with it, right? I'm gonna find a good tenant or if somebody wants to come around and give me 25, 30 grand right now, I'll take the pop. Otherwise, I'd rather just stick a tenant in there, charge them. So I, I made the rent 2,400, the actual uh, mortgage payment, which includes taxes, insurance, in the payment already. So it's all escrowed out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make like almost $600 a month cash flow to just rent the thing. And 30 years from now, someone's gonna say, Phil, Phil, wake up, what, what? Uh, that house you got in East Narden, it's worth $789,000. What house? Where the hell's East Narden, right? So like you just accumulate houses, accumulate them through your career, put them into your portfolio, and have some fun with them.